Since signing from Hoffenheim in July of 2015 for £37 million, Roberto Firmino's place as the point man in Liverpool's 4-3-3 has rarely been under threat. He started over 30 games in four of his last five Premier League campaigns, registering 17-plus goal involvements in all but one. However, with just one goal in the first 10 competitive games of the 2021 campaign and only nine league goals in 34 starts last term, his position as an automatic starter has gradually been brought into question. New £41 million man Diogo Jota has also gone off like a rocket, becoming the first player since 2004 to score in his first three home games. These included two winners and successive 2-1 league victories over Sheffield United and West Ham. He followed this up with a memorable away hat-trick in the Champions League against Atalanta, where he powered the Reds to English football's biggest margin of victory on Italian soil. So, are we on the cusp of seeing Liverpool's fabled front three disassembled? If so, how would the Reds line up? Let's take a closer look. Normally, new recruits need six months to familiarise themselves with Jurgen Klopp's demanding system. At least this was the case with Andrew Robertson, Fabinho and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, all of whom played under 2,100 minutes in their maiden campaigns. However, it appears Jota has largely bypassed this custom, surprising even his manager with his adaptability. So, how is the 23-year-old former Wolf star affecting his team's fortunes at the start of the 2021 campaign? And should Firmino make way to ensure that he gets more minutes? In his first five league appearances under Klopp, Jota averaged 4.2 shots per 90, only topped in the squad by Mo Salah's 4.6. More impressively, 2.9 of those arrived inside the penalty box more than double Roberto Firmino's tally of 1.3. This ability to find space has undoubtedly made Liverpool a deadlier proposition. His XG of 0.5 per 90 is the third best in the squad, and more than double that of Firmino's 0.28. So, it's not just quantity, it's quality too. And while it's true that Firmino has always brought more to the side than goals and assists, the numbers would suggest his ability to contribute on multiple fronts is waning. In 2015-16, Firmino put up a truly elite 3.7 tackles and interceptions per 19 league play, the same as James Milner. However, by the end of the 2018-19 season, this had dropped to 1.2, where it stayed for the subsequent campaign. Of course, some of this owes to system, with Jurgen Klopp relenting on his counter-press in recent years to play a more direct style of football. Some of it, however, likely owes to physical decline after years of hard running. Admittedly, in isolation, tackles and interceptions aren't always the best barometer for work rate. As such, it's also useful to take things like defensive pressures into account. And in this regard, Firmino remains truly elite. While his success rate in terms of winning the ball back is similar to that of his strike partners, the sheer volume of pressing the Brazilian gets through is enormous. In 2017-18, for example, Salah and Mane put up 844 pressures combined. Firmino put up 704 alone. In 1819, with his goal contributions declining from 22 to 18, he upped his work rate even further, registering 733 in the Premier League. Ultimately, this meant he ranked ninth for forward players in the division, despite Liverpool averaging 59% possession. So, even though Firmino isn't throwing himself into the tackle as much these days, he's still the master at harrying defenders in the final third. Despite Firmino's excellent pedigree as a provider, his key passes are rapidly declining. This is especially worrying in a period where Salah and Mane are taking a combined eight shots a game. In 2016-17, the Brazilian was laying on an exceptional 2.3 chances per 90 for his teammates, more than Felipe Coutinho before he sealed his big money move to Barcelona. This has declined year on year, however, culminating in 1.6 per 90 in 2019-20, less than Naby Keita. Another way we can quantify his ability as a provider is by assessing the amount of times he successfully passes into the box, creating high-quality chances for his teammates. In the opening seven league games of 2021, Firmino registered two fewer than Jordan Henderson in two more matches. And while that sample size is small, last season doesn't make for great reading either. In 1920, Firmino found a teammate in the box on 35 occasions, only three more times than his combative deep-lying captain and down from 54 the year before. That's not to say that Jota will be an upgrade in this regard. In his last season for Wolves, he only found a teammate in the box 21 times, albeit in eight fewer games than Firmino. However, what we can deduce is that Klopp won't lose a significant amount of progression into the box by rotating the two, despite Firmino's superior reputation as a provider. It's largely understood that if Firmino were to drop out, Salah would move to the middle, Mane would play on the right, and Jota would take up his preferred position on the left. 
However, against Sheffield United on match day six, Klopp had all forwards on the pitch when his men secured the win, with Firmino playing as a 10 instead of a false nine. A tactical change he took to with ease. Jota played on the right, Mane on the left, and Salah down the middle, with Henderson and Wijnaldum providing the defensive solidity in the double pivot. It was a formation the big German only started with three times in 38 league games in 2019-20. The fact Klopp is willing to deviate from his preferred 4-3-3 shows how serious he is about finding a permanent home for Jota. For now, it's most likely the Portuguese forward will feature against sitting defences, given his effectiveness in the box. We may also see him line up against teams that play expansively regardless of opposition, given his speed in the transition from defence to attack. However, if Liverpool are set for a tactical battle against an equally talented side, Firmino might just retain his place, owing to his instinctive and relentless pressing in the middle of the park. If Klopp can find a way to successfully incorporate them both, we may just see Liverpool top their 2018-19 goal haul of 89. What would you like to see us cover next on Football Daily Explains? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel with notifications on and we'll catch you next time.